People, it has finally happened. GD Day is upon us. The Giga Device GD32 VW Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module, which many of us have been waiting for a very, very long time, as you can see here, has just been announced. And in this new video, I want to give you an overview of what we know as of today, as of like 30th October 2023, about this new part. Before we get into it, an important legal disclaimer. I am not a Giga Device employee. So basically, this is the official news outlet. I'm just a guy who doesn't even speak Mandarin, who just looks at the documents and has some experience in the background and tells you what we know as of today. The situation can in theory change tomorrow. But I'm telling you what we know today and I hope that this helps you when it comes to making a decision whether you want to use the part or you don't want to use the part. And of course, if you want an official statement from Giga Device, get in touch with your nearest Giga Device representative. So, now, let us start out with the most important thing first. Here we see an overview of the chip. It's a single core 160 megahertz unit, 320 kilobytes of RAM, 4 megabytes of remnant memory, Bluetooth LE 5.2 and also Wi-Fi 6. And yes, it's available in two different QFN packages. And as for the various available housings, we see here there are multiple different versions and we get either 21 or 28 GPIOs depending on which size we select. You see here that there are multiple different versions. What is important when we talk about the memory is I would never glue myself too much to the topic here because as you see here this is the GD32 that's a slightly different part and you see my friend Richard Kausler whose website I by the way really recommend you see he tore down one of these parts and you see here they literally have a second part on top of it and with Giga device having this incredibly strong flash memory division probably they are easily going to be able to offer a version with more memory if a significantly large customer shows up and wants it. And yes, there are different temperature ranges, as you see here. For some of them, they even offer an expanded temperature range, which means this thing can be very well suited to all kinds of industrial applications. And the next interesting question is what processor we are going to get and we see that Giga Device once again decided to go with Nuclei and we get an N307 which supports these instructions which we see here. So it's a 32-bit RISC-V core but as you remember from my RISC-V FAQ video there are also some added options and this is the list of options which you get with this chip. And yes, you see here, there is an FPU, there is an MAC, and there is also DSP if you want to do some kind of number crunching with the thing. And as usual for Giga Device, they of course also give you all kinds of additional functions. You see here, you get a CRC unit, you get a random number generator, and then you also get a relatively wide complement of accelerators for all kind of cryptographic jobs. Here you see the CAU, here you see the HAU which accelerates hashes, 
And then finally, there is also a unit for public key cryptography. So basically all of these allow you to offload algorithmic work from the main core to accelerator chips. And then, of course, the next question is what do we actually get here in the Wi-Fi and in the BLE? First of all, nope, there is of course no integrated antenna. Here you've got the RF pin where you can then either connect a PCB antenna or an Uffel connector to get the data in and out. And now we are back in the data sheet to look at what we actually get. We see here, these are the supported Wi-Fi standards. And of course here the information on the few. And then what is equally interesting is the Bluetooth LE standard, where we see we get Bluetooth LE 5.2 and we get support for multiple simultaneous connections. And to return to the antenna topic, there is one shared radio, as we see here, and the LNA is already on the chip. And now the next interesting question is how the development tools will be provided. And here we find an English version of the announcement and we see here that they claim a fully free and commercially available version of SEGA. So this is SEGA of West Germany, who I've already mentioned a few times. And the next step then of course leads us here to the SEGA website, where we see the list of supported devices. And if we click this, we get a page just with the usual additional information. And the interesting thing is we find here a link to an evaluation board. And yes, this is a bit bad to look at in the browser, so now we have to open it like so. And now we see something very interesting. First of all, this is one of the classic Giga device evaluation boards with the large red screen carrier, which we know. And the interesting thing is this, if we look here, we see the chip and then we see around it a module. So it is very possible that Giga device might also offer a module, an ESP32 like module with the part, but in the past these modules often were one of jobs. So as of now, there is just no way to tell this for sure. And now of course we come to the question what we currently know. You see here on OEM secrets, if we run a distributor search, we get nothing. So as of now, these parts, especially when you are outside of the mainland, basically you have to contact your Giga device contact and ask them to give you some of the parts. But what is quite surprising, if you go on the Chinese website, you go here and then you use Bing to translate it to English, I mean, I usually do it to German. Then you see, if you click here, this option, you already get access to quite a bit of Chinese and also lots of English documentation. Here you get the data sheet, here you get the user manual, and then here you can already get the firmware library. Sadly, this firmware library, I've already unzipped it before, does not contain any code for the wireless transmitters. As you see here, if you go into the examples, there's nothing for Bluetooth. And yes, here there are some firmware packages, but this is just the normal Giga device package, project templates, everything. But sadly, nothing for the wireless stack, at least as of now. And yes, there are some schematics for the evaluation board also here, as you see in the user guide for the evaluation board. Here you see the schematics. That's basically how the evaluation board is built up. And yes, this is I2C. There is a memory chip here and no, there is no I3C support in the part as of now. 
And yes, in the user manual you find the usual more detailed information about the various registers and register level things. So in practice you can already start to play with the thing at least a little bit. Well, and now of course we come to the realistic question. This part most definitely is very very attractive for multiple reasons. Not only is it from a large company which has a background in flash memory production, but it also is a completely mainland Chinese company, which makes the part significantly more sanction proof than a part purchased, for example, from Formosa. But be that as it may, it is still early days. I hope that this little video has showed you what to expect and I hope to have more content for you soon. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, as always, down here they go. And thank you so much.